Six days, obviously, since we talked to you, just uh, Braxton Miller, the nine practices you had this week, how available was he, how effective was he, just where things kind of stood? He scrimmaged today. Uh, just limited throws is where we're at right now. We're expecting Monday to hopefully take a big step. But uh, he's, uh, from what they tell me, he's right on schedule. You know, you'd like to have him do a little bit more, but he did scrimmage today, and and uh, attitude's great, so he'll be ready. Phil. Uh, first of all, how did the scrimmage go? And also, there are several position battles. Um, uh, not with all of them, but, but uh, linebacker and safety and the offensive line, the two spots in the offensive line. How are those going? Uh, pretty wide open question there. How did, uh, <laughs> Offensive line is pretty. Uh, Daryl Baldwin is a starting right tackle. Uh, uh, left tackle is um, Taylor Decker, and those guys are. Daryl Baldwin is one of the most improved players on the team. Uh, Joel Hale is right in the battle. Here, here's who's left. You have Pat Alflein, Joel, uh, Pat, Pat Alflein, Daryl Baldwin, and Taylor Decker are the three starters. And then you have Jacoby Boren. You have Joel Hale. You have Chase Ferris. And you have. Uh, uh, Billy Price battling for the next two, and Tony Underwood's in there as well. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, Chad Lindsey is uh, his shoulder was dinged up a little bit. He did scrimmage today, so he'll be in that mix as well. So we're the good thing is we have a couple names in there. The bad thing is it's not solidified yet. It's closer than it's been though. Uh, the other position you said safety strong. Safety strong. You got uh, Cam Burrows, Von Bell, and Tyvis Powell, and Eric Smith right on his toes. So, and T Tanner would be the fifth. Far left, Ari. Herbert, you've had a lot of success just both on the field and in recruiting the first few years you're here. Uh, now the majority of, of the roster is built up now with guys that you brought in personally. Does that make it more of like a urban style team, more your style team? I mean, what does that do for you in this team? Oh, I, th I think maybe the, it just maybe fits the offense a little bit better. But you know, I'm not complaining about the person that we had before because it was pretty good. Uh, we won 24 straight games, so and I'm just not one of those guys. I'm not going to say, well, we didn't have this, we didn't have that. That's part of the deal. Uh, but it's uh, is it fit our style of play? Uh, only only place is maybe the front seven on defense. We want fast, long, athletic guys, and so does everybody. Though they're just hard to find. You talk a lot about wanting to have instant impact guys, and you know. Obviously, upperclassmen are always going to be the ones that you rely on the most. But are you satisfied with the instant impact that you got from the first three recruiting classes, all were top five? Oh no, not the second. The first one was uh, the Noah Spence crew, right? Adolphus. They're starting to come of age. Instant impacts are actually a little disappointed. You know, I, you know, the last year's class we should have had more impacts. Uh, this year, I'm seeing a little bit more chance for that. Uh, but I'm not. It was not the players' fault. I think we had to push them in the action a little faster. I thought Von Bell should have played earlier, but uh, we haven't had that guy, the difference maker, come in as a true freshman, although Bosa, Bosa was the one. But that's, once again, we got to get him out there and play and get him involved because there's some very good players. Front row over to the right, Kim. Urban, you watched your defense practice today. Are you seeing now what you envisioned back in March? And just, just if you could just talk about what your you know, what, what that means to you, I mean, what, what, what it is that you are seeing. The biggest issue is uh, the ability to think from the back end forward, which has probably never been, hasn't really been done here and, and really not many. Play. College football is all stop the run, run the ball. And when you're facing some very good throwing teams or, you know, you have a Sammy Watkins that you need to get more than one hand on him, uh, we have the ability to do that now. And I think Luke and Chris working together have put together a really nice package that, uh, Obviously, to be determined, but so far it's exactly the way I wanted to see it look. We have some health issues at corner right now that we, you know, Duran was, Durant's had a great training camp. I didn't scrimmage him today. He has a tight hamstring. Yeah, Gary and Conley has a sore back. I didn't scrimmage him, and he was doing great. Um, Marshawn Lattimore has a tight hamstring. He didn't go. So there's three guys right there. And then Armani has been has some tight hamstrings. So we just got to get everybody fresh. And that's supposed to happen next week. Has anybody on that side just in that group jumped out at you, though? I mean, Duran Grant has. Duran Grant has stepped up in the safety play, but Duran Grant, the other corner, there, no one took the job yet. But Duran Grant has stepped up. He's playing like an all Big Ten corner. Front row, Todd. Heard you this uh, an update on the running back situation. Has Zeke been back in the rotation? 
rotations. Zeke's back in rotation, just non-contact. Um, the guy who had uh, both Briante and uh, Briante and uh, Rod Smith have made every practice and have done really well. I mean, they're they're doing good. And then you have uh, number four, Curtis Samuel. So uh, I give credit to Briante and Rod Smith. They they've been every day. They've showed up and they've worked their tails off. So they're they're in the mix. Samuel's had a little bit of a wall. No. He's still no. He's good. Back left, Matt. Um, with the position decisions you talked about, not the list here that have made, uh, where are you at in this stage of evaluation coming off of the scrimmage? Is that going to next week? And when do you feel like you got to figure out where we're at for the main game? I think we're all just kind of a little punch drunk right now. I'm not really quite understand what you asked me. So I've been living in a hotel for two weeks. And when you're asking me something about positions or something, no, so no, no, no. I think we're okay. <laughs> in terms of, I'm sorry. In terms of, I, I'm probably screwed up. Asking. No, I'm I'm screwed up. And getting ready to make a two deep and stuff, and you just came out of another scrimmage. Where are you? Do you have a time frame in your mind? Like, yeah, we're two weeks out. Uh, we're two weeks out. We're on schedule. You know, we're going through the camp blues. The camp, you know, it's a hard time, right? It's a it's the dog days or whatever you call it, the hard knocks, and that's what's going on right now. So the, the good thing is we've had minimal uh, ending inju injuries. The, pot, the negative is that we're, there's no consistency because of nagging injuries. So that's, what's, <laughs> that's the only dilemma that I'm facing right now. Everybody else is Tommy Schutz. Tommy Schutz the most improved player at Ohio State right now and uh, has done a really, really good job. Uh, so, I mean, you started seeing people like that step up, along with Daryl Baldwin. I put those two that, you know, just they were non-factors a year ago, and now they're going to be deep into the mix offensively and defensively. So those are the little things that, you know, that uh, you need to see in camp, and we are seeing. I'm probably not giving you enough because I'm not really thinking much about it right now. Far right here, Austin. Urban, when you have a story <coughs> like Noah facing a suspension to start the season, do you continue to leave a player in that you know, leave them out there with the ones throughout camp, or do you need to see pull them out, see somebody else in that position to be ready for a game? Stevie Miller, uh, Rashad Frazier are the two that will fill his spot at, at this point. Jalen Holmes is really making a push uh, right now. Uh, when we go Navy period, which we've been going pretty much every day, uh, he doesn't. He actually is on the scout team, and so uh, uh, we do keep him training with the one defense, though. It's just not in the Navy period. And then obviously we have Virginia Tech. He won't play that one either. Is that pretty consistent? Have you, have you always done that throughout your career? If there's a guy who's not going to play in the opener? Yeah, you got to keep him engaged. And, you know, last year we had a couple on. And unfortunately, so yeah, you got to keep him engaged and practice him. Uh, not normally do you put him with the ones. And Noah's not getting ready for the first game. Noah's not with the ones. Middle row, second. Uh, John? Yeah, Coach, last week when we were here, you, you mentioned that uh, this was the toughest week of the year and that you would have a feel for your team at the end of this week, weeks gone by. How, how do you feel? I feel good. I, I like our players, uh, just the nagging injuries, but I, you know, I knew that. But I, they're fighting through it. There's been no issues as far as any, any within the team issues, you know, no chemistry issues, alignment issues. And it's, it's actually been very positive in that regard. We've had great weather. You know, sometimes you wish you'd get a little more heat, but it's been great, great practice weather, great demeanors, and, and we're not going to practice tomorrow. They deserve that. They've earned that. Front row left, Doug. Urban, you seem to have a couple positions where you have a lot of possibilities and a lot of options. What's it like as you maybe wait for guys, to, a guy to step up and seize that position, whether it's on the line or maybe a receiver? I think it's one of the best parts of coaching to see Nick Vanette right now because Jeff's still getting through his foot injury. Um, he's been on limited role, and to see him step up and – really take us, I mean, he's going to play this year. To see JT, JT Barnett, uh, his move slightly ahead of Cardell in the quarterback derby, and that's because of his opportunities. Um, to see um, Curtis Samuel and the other two backs, and I tell our guys right now, it's a street fight for the ball. You know, don't have a bad day, because that's a couple carries or that's a couple pass receptions away. Mike Thomas and Corey Smith have really Seized an opportunity. Devin Smith has a, a tight hamstring. He's missed the last two days. And uh, he'll be back on Monday. And so I'm seeing guys. And, and you hope you get to the point where that's when you, you know you have a decent program when someone, we say, drops a rifle, someone's got to go. And uh, that's the positive about all this. The negative is, once again, the continuity and consistency. Do you 
you feel better about that backup quarterback deal than you did a week ago? Oh, yeah. JT? Yeah, JT's. Uh, where's, where's he really made strides? Uh, just functionality, completing passes, understanding everything. Get growing up a little bit, he was always kind of a quiet guy, and he's starting to act like a quarterback. Back right, play. When's the last time you stayed in the hotel with the guys? Do you have a roommate, and what have you gotten out of this couple of weeks? Uh, every year I do that, every year I stay, yeah. And uh, do I have a roommate? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> 50 years old, no roommates. What does that mean to the team that you're there? What are you trying to do? you want to observe? Oh, I, I think that's a great question, Clay. I, I think when I first stayed at a Bowling Green, we all stayed in a dorm together. And, and um, you know, I'm there. We had a couple homesickness or a couple, you know, everybody's got something. Uh, but for the most part, by the time they get over there, by the time you know, I get over there, it's walk in the door, shut the door, and bang. So uh, uh, I think it's good, though, if they know, you know, I haven't spent much time talking about it. You know, there's, there's a hand uh, probably six or seven times that I'll go visit with a a young guy in his room and just talk about more of the freshman. But it's good. Is that unusual, do you think? What's that? For, for college football coaches to stay in hotels? To be that close on a daily basis? I don't know. Well, that's a good question to ask. I never really asked. Front row, Dave. Coaches, Taekwon Lewis in the mix at all at mm -hmm. that defensive end spot, and he mentioned with some of those other guys. He had migraine headaches he was dealing with for a couple of days, so we kind of. Uh, I won't say he got passed up, but there's a Jalen Holmes has made, made a couple strides. So Taekwon is in the mix, though. A couple more. Ari? Coach, last week, uh, this time, you said that you would be concerned um, if this were a week later today that Braxton didn't play. He participated, but was still limited. Are you at all concerned with you know just him being limited this far into fall camp, or are you still at ease with the situation? Uh, at ease is probably not. I'm concerned about everything. You know, but uh, I know he'll be ready. I've known Braxton for three years, and, and uh, I can. it's almost like looking at your son, and you can see in his face if he's concerned and he's not. And so uh, I trust that he'll be ready. And, uh, but I, I get, you know, I'd like to run the first team out there and go, and we're not able to do that right now. What's holding him back, the soreness? Sort of, just, just volume. Todd? A lot of these nagging injuries and guys being held out, is that out of necessity or is that out of maybe a different approach and philosophy in terms of resting guys in camp? Oh, it's big picture. I think if we play the game, you just let it eat. And obviously, with this time of year, you still have two weeks left. So you have to, you know, I want, I want him feeling really good by next week. And it's just the right thing. You know, once again, the doctors are the ones that make those decisions, those decisions. Every once in a while, we'll hold someone out like it today. Duran Grant probably could have went, but there reaches a point where he's gone. He's gone. Is any of that a result of no, we've always done that. Last question, Bill. You and others have been very complimentary about Taylor Decker. He's obviously gone from the young guy to the, the veteran. How difficult is that challenge for him, and how well has he kind of embraced it? He's, uh, as a, he, he's, he acts like a captain. I mean, I'm really, really impressed uh, with his leadership skills. I, I really give credit to Jack Mehort and Lindsley and Lindsay and, and uh, those guys, those guys, that that room, and his coach, Coach Warner. I mean, he's a he acts like a grown man. When he first got here, he had that look in his eye, like, "What is this?" And and now he's, that's a product of a culture, and that's very obvious when you go spend time around those linemen. Thank you very Thanks for coming, boys. Thank you.